In this video, you'll see how to manage user access to resources with AWS Service Catalog. With AWS Service Catalog, you can deploy products and portfolios within your organization, make these resources available to users, and assign roles and permissions to limit access to certain resources. AWS Service Catalog allows IT administrators to create, manage, and distribute catalogs of approved products to end users, who can then access the products they need in a personalized portal. To get started, let's navigate to the AWS Service Catalog console. As you can see, no portfolios have yet been configured. Likewise, no products have yet been defined. To deploy portfolios and products in your organization, you can use CloudFormation templates. In this case, let's use the AWS Service Catalog Reference Architecture template which is available through the AWS Samples account on GitHub. Click the Launch Stack button to begin deploying this template in AWS CloudFormation. The Stack Creation page is already populated with the correct URL for the template, so let's proceed to the next step. Give the stack a different name, then review the parameters for the template. Let's accept the default values for these settings. Specify an admin role to execute products in this portfolio. Now proceed through the rest of the configuration screens and review the settings. Acknowledge the two items and create the stack. Let's fast forward a few minutes and refresh this view. As you can see, the stack has been successfully deployed. Let's take a look at the resources for this stack. Here are the different resources that have been deployed, including several roles for managing permissions, the portfolio, and several products contained in the portfolio. Let's navigate to the Identity and Access Management, or IAM, console to look at the roles. As you can see, a new role has been created, called SCEC2 Launch Role. This role has full access to Amazon Elastic Compute Cloud, or EC2. It also has a trust relationship with AWS Service Catalog. This role will be invoked by AWS Service Catalog when a user wants to create a new EC2 instance. When designing products for AWS Service Catalog, it is a best practice to use roles such as this, with only the appropriate permissions needed to manage the necessary AWS resources. Now, let's return to AWS Service Catalog. Refreshing this view, you can see that three products have been defined by the CloudFormation template. In AWS Service Catalog, products can include everything from virtual machine images, servers, software, and databases to complete multi-tier application architectures. The stack also created this portfolio, which contains the three products. In AWS Service Catalog, a portfolio is a collection of products, with configuration information that determines who can use those products and how they can use them. Let's drill down into this portfolio. The Users, Groups, and Roles screen shows you what entities have permission to access the products in this portfolio. You can define multiple portfolios to make different collections of products available to different groups of users. The Service Catalog End Users group has permissions to access and create products from AWS Service Catalog, but does not have permissions to access and provision products directly from other AWS services. Let's switch to the perspective of a user who is part of the Service Catalog End Users group. When the user navigates to AWS Service Catalog, they can see the products available to groups to which they belong. From here, they can simply click on a product name and select Launch Product to begin provisioning a resource in AWS. First, the user must type in a name for the product. They can select the product version if multiple versions are available. In this case, there's only one version of each product. On this screen, the user will need to specify any parameters necessary to provision the service. This product has tag options associated with it. A tag option is a key value pair managed by AWS Service Catalog that serves as a template for creating an AWS tag. When the user chooses a value, it becomes a tag on the provision product. 
This helps assign products to the right part of the organization for auditing and cost management. You can optionally choose to have product event notifications sent to an Amazon Simple Notification Service, or SNS, topic. In this case, let's continue without doing so. Now the user can review the settings and launch the product. The status of this product is shown as Under Change, which means it is provisioning. Let's switch over to EC2 and refresh the view. As you can see, the new instance is being created. In a few minutes, it will be available for use in the running state. By providing users access to products through AWS Service Catalog and ensuring they have limited permissions in AWS, administrators can make sure users do not provision unapproved resources. For instance, let's see what happens when this user tries to create a new EC2 instance right from the EC2 console. The launch failed because the user does not have the appropriate permissions to create EC2 instances. As you become more familiar with AWS Service Catalog, you'll be able to define your own products using CloudFormation templates. You can then use the Upload New Product workflow to make these products available to your users in AWS Service Catalog. You've just seen how to manage user access to resources with AWS Service Catalog. Thanks for watching. Now it's your turn to try.